Now, the risk of thrombosis or these blood clots is manifestly increased when a plaque ruptures. Fortunately, plaques are often stable. And here you can see one such example. The yellow arrow points to a relatively thick margin of connective tissue lying over the top of a plaque. This, on the other hand, is an example of an unstable plaque with only a thin layer of connective tissue over the top. Which leads to the question, what causes thinning or destabilisation of this protective cap? And one answer is foam cells. Those cholesterol-stuffed macrophages you saw earlier, they can secrete enzymes that break down the protective tissue cap. These enzymes are called matrix metalloproteinases. And high levels have been independently associated with the tendency of plaques to rupture. There's 23 different types of matrix metalloproteinases in humans, and one which has been consistently shown to play an important role in plaque rupture is number nine. In fact, high levels of matrix metalloproteinase nine has been shown to be an independent predictor of cardiac mortality. Which led me to ask the question, do triglycerides and HDL levels have any association with matrix metalloproteinase 9, given it plays a key role in cardiac risk? And not surprisingly, the answer is yes. Both high triglycerides and low HDL is associated with plaque destabilising matrix metalloproteinase 9. And more specifically, oxidised LDL, the presence of which is indicated by a, a poor triglyceride to HDL ratio, has been shown to play a causal role in matrix metalloproteinase 9 activity. Of course, there's other factors that are key to the formation of a blood clot besides unstable plaques. And one of the most important of these perhaps is damage to the inside lining of blood vessels. Here you can see hair-like structures lining an artery, and this is what is called the glycocalyx, and it's the first line of mechanical protection that arteries have against clotting. Amongst other things, the glycocalyx shields the artery wall from coagulation particles. It secretes a protein that blocks abnormal clots from forming, called antithrombin-3, It mediates the production of nitric oxide, which dilates blood vessels, and itself is another potent inhibitor of coagulation. In short, the glycocalyx is an effective defence against coagulation and against thrombosis. It should be no surprise, then, that oxidised LDL can damage the glycocalyx. And once this barrier of protection is gone, the risk of thrombosis increases exponentially. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.